Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Northrop Grumman will build the next strategic bomber. Worldview completes a significant flight test. Redbird Flight Simulations joins with Tempest. Embry Cross is October 29, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Deborah James, the Secretary of the Air Force, announced earlier this week that Northrop Grumman has won the contract to build a new long-range strike bomber. The plane is expected to achieve initial operation capability in 2025, according to the Pentagon. The Air Force will eventually acquire 100 of the bombers at a cost of at least $55 billion. Secretary James said in part, quote, our team of professionals carefully considered the offer's proposals in accordance with the source selection criteria. We believe that our decision represents the best value for our nation." End quote. It was explained that there are two parts to the contract, a procurement portion for the first 21 aircraft that include fixed price options with incentives for costs. It's expected the initial aircraft cost to be about $511 million in 2010 dollars for each airplane, plus a development cost of about $21.4 billion for the first group of airplanes. Officials would not disclose information about capabilities, the engines, or other details about the airplane due to security concerns, and it's not yet clear what it will look like. Worldview, a commercial spaceflight company that will use a balloon rather than a rocket to take tourists to the edge of space, has successfully completed a major milestone test flight, keeping the company on track to meet its 2017 goal for private flights with passengers to the edge of space. This test flight carried a scaled-down replica Worldview spacecraft to a final altitude of 100,475 feet successfully, which will now lead to full-scale testing. This subscale test flight demonstrated the foundational technologies necessary for a regular operational flight, which are lifting the cabin module to the edge of space by using a 14 million cubic foot gas balloon and then returning the module to a pre-planned landing point using a controllable parafoil. It is reported that this flight successfully achieved all objectives. Commercial flights with Voyagers are scheduled to begin in 2017. The final passenger capsule will be comfortably styled, offering Wi-Fi, a bar, and a lavatory for Voyagers. After the break, Redbird expands training in Virginia. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Redbird Flight Simulations and Tempest Applied Solutions of Williamsburg, Virginia, have announced an agreement to move the operations of Redbird's Pro Flight Academy and FAA Certified Flight School to Tempest. Redbird's Flight Training Laboratory is located in San Marcos, Texas. Redbird CEO Todd Willinger said in part, quote, this strategic partnership will allow the flight school to accelerate training operations and its geographical footprint while improving our focus and the effectiveness of our R&D efforts at the Skyport. We expect that this new partnership will mark the beginning of a whole new round of remarkable inventions, end quote. The Tempest-led flight school will continue to utilize and test Redbird simulators and skills trainers, its proficiency-based curriculum, and Redbird's diesel Red Hawk aircraft while offering private pilot training through commercial pilot courses under FAA Part 61 and Part 141 regulations. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. 
highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week we feature the IMC Club as one of our valued partners, and we can honestly say it's about time an organization like this was formed. All of us in aviation know that instrument rating can expand the pilot's ability to aviate, but flying IMC can be deadly for a non-proficient instrument pilot. IMC Clubs is the brainchild of Radek Wizikorski, who saw a need to help IFR-rated pilots remain current. The IMC Club is a membership-based, non-profit 501c3 organization focused on instrument-rated pilots and flight instructors. Their intent is to create a community of pilots in order to share information, provide recognition, foster communications, promote safety, and build proficiency in instrument flying. IMC chapters throughout the nation offer monthly meetings, during which pilots can network and share knowledge and experiences. Through the IMC Club website and its structure of local chapters, they are providing a huge step to increase instrument flying safety for the general aviation community. We thank you for participating in the Airborne Initiative and for what you do to increase safety in general aviation. After these messages, Gamma recognizes new technologies. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. As technology marches on, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association recognizes the need for new technologies to be represented. Gamma has established a new associate member category for electric and hybrid propulsion aircraft. Gamma sees this as a benefit to general aviation development. The winner of EAA's 2015 sweepstakes, Piper J3 C65 Cub, Jim Bowderson, was in Oshkosh last week to accept his prize. Jim sent in one entry slip just before the sweepstakes deadline and hoped it would get to EAA in time. It did. Wildlife officials in Idaho have finally confirmed what has been rumored for decades. They said the department used airplanes to relocate beavers in the 1950s, airdropping them by parachute into new habitats. They even have a video to prove it. The National Business Aviation Association has accepted an invitation to be among the participating organizations on the rulemaking committee for registering drones. The NBAA says registration will be an important foundation for safe UAS operations in the national airspace system. A significant milestone has been reached in the Leesburg Airport Remote Tower Demonstration Program. Saab has pioneered the development of remote tower systems and technologies in cooperation with air traffic controllers and air navigation service providers. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Here's some good news regarding labor relations in the airline industry. Pilots represented by the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Airline Division and Republic Airways Holdings have announced that pilots represented by Teamsters Local 357 have voted to ratify a new three-year agreement. Teamsters Local 357 represents more than 2,100 pilots for Republic subsidiaries, Republic Airlines, and Shuttle America. The new contract contains improvements in both pay and work rules and includes significant bonuses upon ratification and on the one-year anniversary of the ratification. 
Captain David Bourne, Teamsters Airline Division Director, said, quote, After several years of negotiations and mediation, we are glad Republic pilots have a contract that reflects their significant contributions to the company and the airline industry, end quote. Republic's Matt Koskel said of the agreement, quote, We are pleased our pilots have agreed to a contract that will reward our pilots with industry-leading compensation and an improved quality of life, end quote. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.